Don in London. Hello, it's uh, July 16th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both, as it was in my case. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Wanting to be with the right people, in the right places, doing the right things and having the right things, and trying very hard to fit in. Indeed, trying to fit myself into or squeeze myself into impos impossible sit situations where there was no payoff whatsoever for anyone including me. So these days I try live sober one day at a time, finding out which people, which places and which things I need, not want, but need to be with or need to be around. And it's taken quite a long time to get there because I didn't know who I was, I didn't know what I wanted to do, or if I wanted to do something it seemed that every obstacle could be put in the way. I didn't have high expectations, or nor was I trying to be perfect, but I guess by trying to fit in I did try to be perfect, and I never succeeded. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's happened? No longer am I in the throes of addiction to alcohol, and no longer in the throes or the thrall or the thrall of trying to be with the right people, have the right things, and be in the right place, as I thought I ought to be. And how did this come about? How did I ever get to a place where, from 24-7 20, drinking, with no prospects, nowhere to live, nothing, absolutely nothing, but a head full of memories, and a head full of fear of what might happen next? I felt the only way was to shut down. What helped me? Of course, family, friends, community and professionals did keep me alive and loved me and I didn't know what they were about or why they were doing what they were doing. I just thought I, would, I was to be written off as a going concern, as a human being. I no longer had any value whatsoever and that's a ter terribly awful place to be where there's no self-esteem, no faith, no courage to keep on going except to get the next drink inside, find oblivion and hope I don't wake up. Well it's changed a lot since then and in my recovery family, friends, professionals, medical people have been inspirational and helpful and constructive and helped me get back to basic living with the help of a fellowship which I never thought I would understand or go to or be a part of and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. After all, AA represents sobriety, and that was the very last thing I'd ever really un understood about life. How to be sober, how to exp experience my feelings as they are in the moment of now. And there it was, AA, a fellowship all about emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. Not drinking and finding out who we are on a daily basis. So it was a shock to the system, and I share about AA, the fellowship, because it helped me, but I never speak for AA. It's full of unique, authentic people who speak for themselves where they will. And what I've learned in recovery, it's the many voices of experience, strength and hope, which is attractive, because we find out how other people did it. And it's not promoted. AA can't fix you. Only you can do what you can do on a daily basis to start to live life sober again if you are an addict or an alcoholic. And the same applies to all the fellowships. It's about improving our ability to deal with reality, life on life's terms. Or as we say it these days, it is what it is. So that's what fellowship does. There's no cure, as far as I know. And even if there were some sort of pill one could take to cure the ism of, or the physical craving for drink or drugs or whatever it happens to be, I don't know that it would actually help us learn how to live life again. There are no quick fixes in my opinion. So the root of sobriety for me is emotional and spiritual understanding about life as it is today. So why do they call it a one day program? Simply because this is where we live. Everything, everything is happening now and will impact on what happens next. So, 
what is AA? I share the AA preamble and some thoughts and feelings over the years and the AA daily reflection. This is what AA says about itself and as I'm in it I tend to agree with what this says. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, a desire to stop drinking, no rules, laws or regulations. The fellowship is not allied to anything, although everybody in the fellowship is allied to something or other. So we all come with our baggage, if you like, into fellowship, and we share about life and how it's working. But it doesn't mean we adopt the behaviour or the attitudes or understandings around uh, faith, connections, you name it. We're there for one reason, to share how sobriety is working for us. And we do that in the context of our own lives. Hence, it is the many voices that keep us sober in AA, going to meetings, groups, and being a part of, and doing a bit of service as we feel able to do, when we're able to do it. So we're not under an obligation of any kind. We only have a desire to stop drinking, share the message, and live soberly one day at a time. So how hard is that? Well, in my early days it was almost impossible to actually understand that I could have a life without alcohol. Because, as any good addict will tell you, whether it's alcohol or another substance, even down to chocolate or a particular type of food, or a behaviour which can be self-harming, like eating too much, or eating too little, or cutting ourselves, all these things are there to take away feelings of less than, or some inadequacy in us. Rather than say, we're good enough and we can keep on learning, that's what it is. Good enough, keep on learning life. Have humility. And humility is not a bad word, it just means keeping on learning. And I try to do this as best I can. So, some of the uh, reflections from AA for 16th of July. Yeah, 16th. A measure of humility. This is about step 7 in the 12th step How to Live Life program. I hate to call it program. No, I don't. Maybe it's the only way to describe it. The 12 steps of living, I, w I would like to call it. So, step 7 is about humility. Dealing with our shortcomings. Uh, my primary shortcomings, not enough faith, not enough courage, not enough confidence, feeling less than. So, if I can improve my faith, courage and confidence, faith in what is going on, courage to keep on going, and so improve my confidence about being on track, and share about it often, just to get some feedback, then maybe I am on track. And this is how step seven works for me. Excuse me. So the AA reflection is this. In every case, pain has been the price of admission into a new life. But this admission price has purchased more than we expected. It brought a measure of humility, which we soon discovered to be a healer of pain. So in other words, learning how to live life differently each day, no matter what the situation, and often it's love, romance or and finance which causes most grief and most pain, then we're on, we're on the right track. He goes on to say, it was pain, painful to give up trying to control my life, even though success eluded me, and when life got too rough, I drank to escape. Accepting life on life's terms will be mastered through humi the humility I experience when I turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand him. And I must say, it must be your own understanding of God in this. It's not a unifying understanding of God, other than maybe in general terms, because I can't define God. But encompassed in that for me is learning the truth of situations, how to love and be loved back, 
and the wisdom of life truth love and wisdom embodies God in essence for me because those are the most elusive qualities or attributes truth love and wisdom when my life is in God's care the truth love and wisdom of a situation fear uncertainty and anger are no longer my response to those portions of life that I would rather not have happen to me the pain of living through these times will be healed by the knowledge that I have received the spiritual strength to survive and that fits very nicely with my understanding of emotional and spiritual emotion knowing my feelings as they are right now and spiritual living in the moment so emotional feelings fit the moment of now spiritual and I can make it even more complicated than that by trying to define what I think God might be but I can't the universe is far bigger than me to define and whoever or whatever is behind it I do not understand so the understanding I have is truth love and wisdom I have opinions and beliefs based on my life experience but what I've learned is life keeps changing so I need more life experience to learn the truth of now so for today what I was thinking about just do it an ad campaign suggested or by Nike I think it was and it's not easy in early days to just do it to stop thinking so deeply analysis and paralysis fear of mucking up as our feelings start to work in recovery we start to see the light side of life or the bright side of life as the song goes an emotional and spiritual fellowship our feelings working in the moment of now so emotional and spiritual fellowship offers me the opportunity to find out and keep learning my feelings as they're happening rather than going back and saying what just happened or I don't understand I don't feel right about this actually not feeling right is a good, good starting point to try and find out what the feelings are and they can be good feelings or bad feelings or shocked that someone else has feelings for us even and step seven this is from another year a measure of humility a wonderful gift when we see our defects depleted daily pride ego and fear in my case pride before a fall pride holding up to old ideas ego covering up my shame and guilt about something and fear of being found out those were key elements of me fear of being found out is not good enough in any, any, in any role of life be it a partner, work you name it most often as a friend I was a difficult person to be friendly with simply because I didn't know who I was and I didn't want to let you down I rem remember that so well what would happen if I let you down and somebody else asked me that of me, Don, what will you do if I let you down? And I thought, I wouldn't even consider it being let down. I was that unaware. Anyway, that's me. Painful, yes, as we make the transition from old behaviour to new behaviour, from excluding others and hiding, to including and asking for help to change. Courage, faith and confidence takes time as our world opens and old wounds heal. And this is all part of it. We look back, don't stare, we do a life story, learn what was not working for us and what could work for us in the future. And another year, step seven, learning about who I am on a daily basis offers me the opportunity and choices to change with humility, developing esteem, faith and courage to keep on evolving. Our higher power, for me, truth, love and wisdom of others always helps me. We learn to rely on good conscience and faith, fellowship, family and community. From theory into practice, always our key. So if we put our thoughts and feelings into practice about living to the good of life, courage, faith and confidence, and less fear, ego and brave facing, then life will improve. It just will, because we find out who we are best with, who we are, what is possible and what is not possible all these things start to occur and I was on this week I was standing on the church steps in uh, in a different part of London and I met somebody a stranger and we had a, com um, a discussion about love 
I don't think I've actually pull, pulled it off the computer yet. I'll try and do that now. So I met this person on the steps of a church. Perfect stranger. Here it comes. There you are. Modern life. We can uh, print things as we're talking. And that <laughs> Love on the Rocks, I called it, and made it a note on Facebook. So it's already out there, actually. And I don't know whether I can put this onto my YouTube because it's too long, but we'll see. Anyway, Love on the Rocks. Some of my favourite drinks were always on the rocks. Irish whiskey. We believe that Jameson brings people together. Jameson's Irish whiskey. A tipple, a tipple for some and a bottle for me became my truth. So others just take a tipple and it's fun. Alcohol aware would tell you that in the UK. Not, these, not so these days, I'm pleased to say. Our sobriety continues one day at a time. It is years since my last alcoholic drink. It is. Years. Perfect, perfect strangers meet on the steps of a church. We talk about the week, our troubles and our happiness today. Always there is something to share. Feelings and thoughts, current affairs and past love affairs. There seems nothing we cannot share and laugh and commi commiserate about. And it's not laughing in the sense of undermining or making humiliating people. It's laughing at ourselves and our humanness, I guess. Love is behind just about every decision we make, and we agree that love is everything, from being blind to informed and to complicated. It seems we are both in agreement there. We can love people for many reasons. And when it comes to love and affection for partners and deep intimacy, why is it when we can find life complicated by loving? Why is it we can find life more complicated by loving more than one of our one over the years? So being in love with more than one person and had we ever realized that we had the same deep feelings for lovers at the same time we both both agreed this had happened in the past and it's difficult when we realize that it's it's not how we think we ought to feel about situations in the past or why did those situations occur maybe the answer is in what we want now we keep it simple these days, and yet the feelings of attraction will always be there for many we meet. After all, how do we keep making friends? Connections where truth flows and nothing is left unsaid. And to cherish always makes me realise that relationships do run deep. I was quite superficial in my understanding of life in general back then. My attitudes and behaviour were formed by experiences as life was back then. And life was fast and furious, driven by needs I really did not understand, clueless and seeking the elusive connections that love offered. So true. Letting go any idea of what might be, might happen, has opened me up again. So in other words, I'm open again to love as it is. It is what it is, love. At the same time, I realise new, new living means I need not find every element of love exists in one person. If I relied on one person to fulfil every need, it would burden and weigh another down completely, popularly defined as codependent in this modern age of self-analysis. And most importantly, f fidelity is needed and key if ever there were to be a partner in my life. Yes, fidelity. To love, be loved back and useful. A true partnership me and another, and to be able to share everything. Learning our truth together to develop trust does require fidelity. In love with a partner, we find every element of life will come together. At the same time, we will love others in different ways and develop friendships which may last as long as we do. And this is what, what I'm finding. And living as we do, there will be losses too. We can cherish always these days, and though people will come into our lives and go as we change, and life changes, life situations change. So we don't hold people to ransom anymore. Not always welcome. As we see the truth, we can find understanding, accept, and be let go, or let in as circumstances change. 
Love on the rocks? Question mark. Less so these days, and there is no need to drink away heartbreak. Time heals and we forgive and are forgiven. We need passion and compassion. Those are key in the moment of now. And that's what I learn as life goes on. You know, yeah, and we don't have to regret any love of the past. In fact, I cherish love, even though I guess in some ways I was quite frightened of being in love with the girls in my life, just in case they ran away because I wasn't good enough. But you know what I did? I ended up putting all my eggs in one basket. I couldn't, I couldn't let love in, and I couldn't share, and I put all my effort into career, job, proving my worth materially. And I'm glad it broke me. It broke me down completely. The circumstances don't matter, but the breakdown of all that expectation of fulfillment through one element of life, broken to the point of destruction and couldn't be rebuilded to do it again. It would take too many years and I don't have that many years left in me. That's what I've learned. So life changes every day. Courage, faith and confidence to be me and to know that people will come in and go out of my life as life is, as we are happy to be friendly and helpful to each other. Yes, the virtues of life they work if I work at it the serenity prayer when everything goes up, upside down or stays the right side up helps me with my feelings in the moment of now around what I can and cannot do I can't make people be anything so I'm powerless over people, places and things and I'm really pleased about that I don't want to make anybody do anything I'm just happy when they are something something important to themselves and they're able to be honest, open and willing and trusting all good so the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience as a meditation can do, can't do, wisdom to know the difference that's what it's all about and letting go that annoying habit of trying to be right trying to be perfect so to God or in good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the thing I c things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, always in the moment and just for today.